Hello there and welcome to this series of videos going through the content of A-Level Further Maths. Here we're looking at loci on an Argand diagram, the problem solving edition, part 2 of exercise 2e. So, previously we looked at three different types of loci diagrams on an um, Argand diagram. So we saw a circle, we saw a, um, a perpendicular bisector, and we saw a half line to do with arguments as well. In this case here, we have uh, a question that we're going to attach on a problem-solving question onto. We were first asked to sketch z minus 5 minus 3i, modulus of it equaling 3. This effectively tells us that we want a, um, a locus of points that has a distance of 3 from the coordinate 5, 3 as the centre of that um, locus of points. Um, treat the minus 5 minus 3i effectively as a graph transformation or a complex transformation. Um, so how, that's how we know where the centre of the transformation is. And we want all of the complex numbers that will have a distance of 3 from that uh, centre point. And all of these distances here are a distance of 3, so that forms a circle. Okay, part A here finds a maximum value of the argument of z in the interval from minus pi to pi. So what this is asking us is we start from 0, 0, because we're only working out the argument of z. What we effectively want is to find which of these complex numbers will have the greatest argument um, out of all of these sets of points. So the point down here will have an argument of 0, probably the minimum arguments from out of this diagram. This, these points up here will have a greater argument than 0, 0, than the 0 point, um, but, but not as high as some of these points around here. What we effectively want is to find what this argument here is. This will be the maximum argument out of any of the points on this uh, loci diagram already. So that's what we're looking for. We're looking for what is the argument of this complex number here uh, on the diagram. So what we want to find is theta here. Now what we can use here is um, some very basic uh, circle theorems, trigonometry, sine, cos and tan, um, and coordinate, um, coordinate geometry to help us work out either what this point might be or what the angle between um, maybe the centre to the cent centre of the plane to the centre of the circle or something like that. So it's basically a coordinate geometry question. So the way we're going to do this question is we're going to split up the um, problem into finding out this angle inside here and we can double it um, to get the total argument here. We know that the distance along the side here is going to be 5 and 3 going up here. Um, so all we need to do now really is to work out what this angle here is because the angle round to there will be the same because we'll have a 3 along the side here as well. And uh, we can also use the circle theorem here that the distance from any point outside the circle to the tan to the to the point of intersection in the circle at the um, at the tangent is equal to each other. So distance here is the same as that distance there. So working out the angle inside here, working out this angle in here, we've got tan minus one because we're working out opposite and adjacent of 3 over 5. So here we're going to get 0 0.54 radians. So this angle inside here is 0 0.54. But that's not what we want. We want the full argument that's round from here to here as well. So what we're going to do there is double it to get the final answer, which is 1.08. So this here is our final answer to this problem here find the maximum value of arg z in the interval here. So we worked out that it would be a complex number roughly up here. We worked out that the argument around from that point there is 1.08. A good question would be, well, what if the problem was find the maximum value of arg z plus 2? 
Well, in that case here, we just start the problem back here at 0 minus 2, and we'll be looking for this argument round from here to here. Okay, so you just change the point of reference at which you're working with um, your arguments. All right, then, uh, use a Cartesian method to find the equation of the locus of z. So what we're looking to do here is work out the equation of this circle here. Now, now it's pretty obvious that it's going to be x minus 5 squared plus y minus 3 squared equals 9. Whoops, the radius needs to be squared. And we should know this pretty comfortably from our knowledge of um, equations of circles. But that's not uh, the question here. We need to prove it algebraically. And we've seen this before. The method that we use to do this with is to substitute in z with x plus yi group together the real and imaginary parts inside that modulus and then apply the function of modulusing these complex numbers here. And remember, it's going to be the square root of the real part squared add the imaginary part squared. So it's going to be x minus 5 squared add y minus 3 squared, all square rooted, and that equals 3. Now, we, we lose the i here. Just um, some people might accidentally go wrong here because they'll include squaring the i. We're not going to square the i. We just square the imaginary part, not the imaginary i as well. Okay, Square both sides of this equation here now, and we get our answer that we were looking for before. x minus 5 squared add y minus 3 squared equals 9. So that's the equation of the locus of z. All right, and so another problem here then, which is um, for the set of uh, complex numbers, modulus z minus 12i minus 5i equals 3, find the, max, find the minimum value of and maximum value of mod z. So this is draw this locus and then find the complex number or find the maximum distance from the point 0, 0, of any of the points along that along that locus. Now just a reminder here, we're going to have a coordinate at the center of 12, 5, and that's going to be the center of the circle, and um, the radius of that circle is going to be 3 because we want all of the complex numbers that once you've subtracted 12 and 5i, will have a modulus of 3 or a distance of 3 from the point 12, 5. So draw yourself a little diagram here. This is what it's going to look like. We're just looking in the top right hand section of the Argan diagram here. Radius of 3 out to the circumference. And what we want, the question here is find the minimum and maximum values of mod z. So that's starting from the 0, 0 coordinate. The reason it's starting from the 0, 0 coordinate is because this z inside here has not been transformed. And we're going to look for the shortest and largest distance from this point here to any point along the locus here. So what we're looking for here, the largest distance away is going to be out here. The smallest distance is going to be here. You can effectively think of that as the shortest distance to any of the points along this circle here. The largest distance away is going to be the extremity there. When we draw a straight line through the center of the circle and intersecting the um, circumference um, through that line. This here is going to find us the minimum value of mod z. This here is going to find us the maximum value of mod z. Um, but the, the answer that we're looking for is the distance from 0, 0 to these points here and here. Now, how do we work that out? Well, it's not, it's not that bad, actually. All we need to do first 
is to make sure we've got a clear diagram and then it's just a bit of Pythagoras's theorem really. What we're looking for first is the distance from the 0, 0 coordinate to 12, 5, 12 along 5 up, so that's going to be 13, and then it's just going to be 3 less than that to get to this point here, and 3 more than it to get to this point out here. So the minimum value is going to be 10, and the maximum value is going to be 16. So it's as easy as that. It's actually just a bit of Pythagoras' theorem, but you need to know what you're looking for when you read the question. All right, then. Next question here is use an algebraic method to find the Cartesian equation of the locus of this um perpendicular bisector here. Now how do I know it's a perpendicular bisector? Well we want equal distances because the moduluses are on both sides and it's from the coordinate of 3, 0 and from the coordinate of 0, minus 1 because those are the transformations that we're going to apply. Okay so what we're going to do first, let me um, let me first substitute in x plus yi for the z parts now a good idea here is to group together real parts and imaginary parts inside both of the moduluses. And then remember the operation of moduluses is to square the real part and add it onto the imaginary part and square root your answer. So in this case here, it's going to be x minus 3 squared plus y squared equals x squared plus y, my, y plus 1 squared and both of those sides are square rooted. Um, to solve this equation now, to work out the straight line, we need to square both sides to get rid of those square roots, expand both brackets, cancel out the bits that you don't need or that cancel out on both sides, and then rearrange this equation to make it y equals something. So subtract 1, divide through by 2, and that's the line we get, y equals minus 3x plus 4 represent the locus of z on a Cartesian axis. Well, here it's the midpoint between 3, 0 and 0, minus 1, or the perpendicular bisector between those two coordinates. And that looks about right, doesn't it? We'll have an intersection up here at 4, gradient of minus 3 going down through those two points. And if you take any coordinate along this line of locus points here, the distance between both of the coordinates is going to be equal. This distance here is going to be equal to this distance here. That's what the question is asking you to draw. Okay. Right, your turn to have a go at this question here. Only one question here, um, so that you have lots of questions to have a go at in exercise 2e. So pause the video and have a go at this one. All right then, so let's have a go at this one here together then. So first of all, let's draw us out a nice diagram. The centre of this circle is going to be at 5 minus 7 with a radius of 5. Now that means it's going to touch one of the axes. Uh, so centre at 5 minus 7. And the radius is going to be at 5. So it's going to go round like this. There's going to be something like this. It's going to have a height, a maximum height here at minus 2. Here is going to be minus 5. It's going to go all the way down to um, sorry, minus 7 there. I mean, it's going to get down to minus 7. And further, 5 more down is going to get down to minus 12 at the bottom here. It's going to come out at 5 here. It's going to come out at a maximum distance out there at 10. Okay. So that's a rough, good diagram um, to describe this locus P. Part B is find the Cartesian equation of this locus. So remember, what we have to do first is introduce x plus yi inside the modulus symbols. Replace that for z. Uh, group the real parts and the imaginary parts together. 
So it's going to be x minus 5, whoops, we don't need to square it yet, x minus 5, and then it's going to be plus y plus 7, no, not squared, I'm getting ahead of myself here, uh, i equals 5. Now we apply the operation of modulus symbol, it's going to be real parts squared, add imaginary parts squared, all square rooted, so this is going to be now x minus 5 squared, add y plus 7 squared, all square rooted, equals 5. That's what the uh, modulus definition does. Now the next thing for us to do is square both sides to get rid of the square root. And this is going to be our final answer here. It's going to be x minus 5 squared, add y plus 7 squared, equals 25, the square of the radius of the circle, which is exactly what we'd expect. Okay. Part C here is to find the maximum value of arg z um, in the interval from minus pi to pi. Um, just in case you are interested, um, the brackets here are meant to be like that. The curved bracket means that the interval does not include minus pi, and the square brackets means that it does include pi. Effectively, you could replace this whole statement here with minus pi less than um, theta less than or equal to pi. So when it's a squared bracket on an interval symbol, it could equal it. When it's a curved bracket on an interval symbol, it means that it can't equal it. It's the difference between greater than or greater than or equal to. Anyway, back to the problem at hand here. Find the maximum value of arg z. Now we're going to be working in negatives here because it's on the bottom part of the argan diagram. Um, the minimum value, well, the maximum is technically going to be the smallest negative value. So we're looking for this angle here. Now, how are we going to solve that? Well, what we could do is we know that this theta angle here add this theta angle here add this argument that we're actually looking for must add up to make um, pi by 2, 90 degrees. So that's going to be where we're going to start then. We're going to have a triangle here. The, the uh, dimension down the bottom here is going to be 7, or the distance of the triangle. The distance here is going to be 5. So what we're going to do is we're going to have theta equals and then it's going to be this angle in here, so it's going to be tan minus 1 of, um, it's going to be then opposite over adjacent to us, so that's going to be 5 over 7. So grab your calculator, and it's going to be tan minus 1, 5 divided by 7, and you get 0 0.62, uh, 0 2. Double it because we're going to need this whole angle around here, and then do pi minus two of that theta angle, and that will give us this remaining alpha angle here. That's the answer to our problem. So it's going to be pi divided by two in brackets minus two times answer, which gives us 0.33. Perfect. So that's the answer there. Now that's not the answer, the argument is going to be negative, so we need to make sure we include that in our answer. Minus 0 0.33. Okay, so there we are then. So that's this question solved here. Um, what I want you to do now is make sure you pause the video and have lots of practice at this on question 2e. Make sure you have a go at those problem solving ones as well, because those are the, probably the ones they're going to ask you in an exam. So make sure you're good at them. Have lots of practice and you'll improve your ability. Right, thanks for watching.